Welcome to part one of the series on Clarify. In this series, we will be sharing a complete guide on getting started with the Clarify platform, including data curation, building custom models, creating your own workflows, and building AI apps using modules. This session is all about an introduction to the Clarify platform. If you are new here and want to get started, sign up for the platform and log in. Once you log in and set up your profile, you will be prompted to create an app by default. After creating the app, this is how the page will look with your app. But what are apps, and what can you do within them? Applications are the basic building blocks for creating projects on the Clarify platform. They are self-contained projects for storing and managing inputs, annotations, models, concepts, datasets, workflows, searches, modules, and more. As you can see, it is currently empty, and this is the app ID and you can even change it. The left-hand sidebar contains sections for inputs, where you can upload images, videos, or text. Datasets are collections of inputs and their annotations, and you can create your datasets from here. The Models section allows you to train custom models, and in the Workflows section, you can combine multiple models to build workflows. The Modules section lets you create web applications using Streamlit, and deploy them on the Clarify Cloud. And the Labeling Tasks section is for labeling and annotating your inputs. Let's upload our first input to the app and run a prediction using a model from the community. Navigate to the Input section. As you can see, it is empty. I'll simply upload an image, and it has been successfully uploaded. Let's click on the input. This is the Input Viewer screen. And in the top right corner, it's currently set to Annotate Mode. Here, you can select a model from the community to annotate the input, but we'll explore that later. Now, let's switch to Predict Mode to run some predictions. I am selecting the General Detection Model, which can detect a variety of common objects, identify their locations, and generate bounding boxes around them. Running the prediction, you can see that it correctly identified the butterfly and added the bounding box. It is quick. We have successfully made a simple prediction using one of the models from the community in our app. Let's get back to the app's overview page. You can also add notes for your team or the community from here. You can update the cover image and modify the app description from here. If you want to create a new app, click on the Create option in the top right section. You can start with a blank app or use an app template. Templates are pre-built blueprints that provide a starting point for creating your own applications. Instead of building an app from scratch, you can use these templates to get started. There are templates for different use cases like RAG, image moderation, and others. We will discuss them in more detail later. Here, we will create a blank app. Provide an app ID and a short description of your app. Then, select the primary input type. If you are working with image data, select image. If you are working with text data, select text. Based on the input type you choose, a base workflow will be assigned to your app. Base workflows index your data and provide your app with a default knowledge base. These indexed outputs enable input similarity searches and support transfer learning for training on top of the base workflow models. While a base workflow is automatically selected based on your primary input type, but you can choose another one that best suits your specific use case. If you select image or video as your primary input type, the default base workflow will be universal, which can index both text and image inputs and enable them for search. This is suitable for both input types, hence the name universal. If you select text as your input type, the base workflow will be set to text. You can also select a different workflow based on your specific needs. Once you select your base workflow, you can click on Create App. Here is your new app. You can create as many applications as you want and edit or delete them as you see fit. Typically, you would create a new application for each set of related tasks. You can also go to your app settings, where you'll find the API keys related to your app. You can copy, edit, or delete them. App-specific API keys are used to authorize access to your Clarify applications. You can use an API key to access resources within the scope of the app defined by that key. 
A key is automatically generated when you create a new application. You can also create a new API key with custom scopes. Click on the Create API Key button, provide a short description, select the scopes you want for that specific key, and create the API key. For example, if want to allow your team to only add and remove annotations on inputs, you can select only that specific scope. You can also add new collaborators to your app. Simply click on Add Collaborators, provide the email address associated with their Clarify account, and select the custom scopes you want them to have access to, similar to the API keys. From here, you can even change the base workflow and the app's visibility. By default, it is set to private, but you can change it to public. Once you make the app public, it becomes discoverable to everyone in the community section. Additionally, you have the option to delete the app, delete all models, or transfer ownership from this section. There is a My Apps section on the top left, which contains all your resources, your apps, models, workflows, and modules. You can find every resource you create in this section. The Collaborations tab allows you to access the apps that you share with other team members and work on together. Next, the Community section contains publicly available resources like apps, models, workflows, and modules. In the Featured section, you'll find popular models like Image Detection, Image Moderation, GPT-4, and others, along with Featured Workflows. You can also access the Getting Started guides here. If you have any questions, join our Discord community and share them with the team, or you can chat with our assistant or message our support team. Next, in the Community Apps or Templates section, you'll see all public apps and templates. As we discussed previously, there are also templates, which serve as pre-built blueprints for creating your own applications. Templates contain inputs, models, and workflows to get you started quickly. For example, the image moderation template includes ready-to-use workflows for moderating images. You can filter the templates from here. You can find all the templates here. Let's try the image moderation template. To use a template, click Use Template on the top right, provide the app ID and description, and create the app. The template will be cloned for you to use. You can see there are a few workflows here that help you with image moderation tasks. Let's open them. These are the workflows. Let's try the Image Moderation Classifier workflow. This workflow uses the Image Moderation Classifier model and can identify images containing nudity, explicit content, or other harmful user-generated content. Simply pass an image to the workflow and you'll see the response. That's how you can use app templates to streamline building your applications. Next is the Models section, which includes various community models like detection, classification, segmentation models, LLMs, embedding models, image generation models, multimodal models, and audio models. There are over 500 public models available. You can filter models based on their category by input type, output type, model type, use case, and license. For example, to use the face detection model, click on it to start testing with example images. This model detects faces in images along with their confidence scores. You can view details about the model in the description. To test with your own images, click the plus icon, upload an image, and run the prediction. To integrate this model into your application, click Use Model and explore the Call by API options, which contain code snippets for Python, JavaScript, Java, Node.js, Curl, and PHP. Copy the code snippet to start using it. You may notice a reference to a PAT, which stands for Personal Access Token. A PAT is a key that authenticates a user across all the applications they have access to and is not linked to a specific app. Personal Access Token allows you to access resources outside the scope of your own apps, while an API key, which we discussed earlier, only allows access to resources within the specific app defined by that key. So, an API key can be used to access your own app's resources, but not other public resources. To view or create a PAT, click on the profile icon at the top right. Under the Security section, you'll find the PAT options, where you can generate a new key by selecting the scopes. Let's try out another model. Go back to the community and filter for multimodal models. 
you'll see all the available models here. Let's test the LAMA 3.211B Vision Instruct model. I'm uploading an image and asking it to describe the details since it can understand both text and image. Here's the response. Similarly, you can get the code for this model from the Use Model section and find more details in the model notes. Similarly, you can filter other models and use them as needed. That's a quick overview of the model section. Next, workflows. Workflows allow you to combine multiple models, helping you create powerful multi-model systems. Here are all the publicly available workflows. Let's take a look at some of the public workflows. Let's try the audio sentiment recognition workflow, which converts audio to text and then detects the sentiment of the audio. This workflow enables you to perform both actions in a single flow, eliminating the need for multiple API calls. Let's upload an audio file. You'll see the transcription of the audio from the model here, which is then used as input for the text sentiment analysis model. Here is the final response. Similarly, you can use this workflow by clicking on the Use Workflow option here. You can even build your own complex workflows based on your use case, which we will discuss in a dedicated video. Finally, modules are custom plugins that provide both UI elements and the ability to perform computations using the Clarify API. With modules, you can create beautiful web applications and host them on the Clarify platform. We currently support creating modules using Streamlit, an open-source, Python-based framework that allows you to create interactive web applications for data science and machine learning projects. These are all the public modules available. Let's try out the LLM Battleground module, which allows you to compare and evaluate various large language models available in the community. Let's install this module into our app. Select the app in which you want to install it and confirm. You can choose whether to make it public or private. Let's choose private and install it in the app. The module is now installed in the app. As prompted, let's add all these concepts to the app. Now, you can select the LLMs you want from here and compare their responses by providing a prompt. You can compare the responses of the GPT-4 model and the LAMA 3.8b Instruct model side by side for the same prompt. You can also create your own modules and deploy them to the Clarify Cloud, which we will cover later in this series. That's about the community. Additionally, you have the Control Center, which serves as a unified dashboard, a single pane of glass to monitor everything happening within your account on the platform. It streamlines the management of your Clarify operations by consolidating all relevant information into a single screen, minimizing the need to switch between different tools or windows. You can also track your utilization of Clarify's resources using charts, graphs, tables, and other tools. In the top right corner, you have your profile icon that lets you easily access all your details. The organization feature allows you to combine multiple Clarify accounts into a single organization, enhancing collaboration and enabling centralized management of your company's machine learning projects. It helps streamline your team's capabilities, making it easier to achieve compliance, security, and budgetary goals for your enterprise. You can create a new organization in this section by providing an ID, name, and billing email. Account section allows you to access and edit the account details. You can update your account information, change your user ID, add an email address, adjust your user profile visibility to either public or private, or delete your account. Under the billing section, you can access the billing information associated with your account. You can also change your current billing plan, add credit card details, or access invoices related to your account. By default, when you create a new account, you will be under the community plan, which will give you enough credits to explore the platform, but you can change your plan from here. You can find more details on each plan in the pricing page. Security. As we have seen previously, this section allows you to create and manage your personal access tokens. You can also update your password and activate two-factor authentication from here. Under the usage section, you can monitor how you consume Clarify's resources. 
That's the introduction to the Clarify platform. You can follow the documentation linked in the description if you need additional information on a specific topic or reach out to us on Discord. In the next video, we will explore how you can curate your data using the platform, including data uploads, data set creation, adding labels, reviewing labels, and auto annotation. Thanks for watching.